Hello Internet! Welcome to Art's Art. My name is Art. Let's do some art today, shall we? So today we are going to be doing something a little bit different. I am still going to be making a sculpture, but the catch is I'm actually kind of running out of hard drive space to record sculpting in. Basically, I only have enough drive space for about 24 and a half, 25 hours of footage, which sounds like a lot. But previously, my sculptures have usually taken somewhere around 100 to 150 hours, depending on which one we're talking about. So this is going to be quite a challenge for me. It's, it's going to be kind of like a speed sculpting skill test. So let me get started with the form, and I'll tell you what we're making as I go. So the other day, I was on a podcast called Mei Oui. That's its French name. Its English name is A Taste of Honey. It's hosted by the lovely Chloe Hollings, a friend of mine who you may know as the voice of Widowmaker from Overwatch. A Taste of Honey is a podcast about the little or big miracles in life. And she invited me on to talk about how I started sculpting because this sculpting thing is actually pretty new for me. At this time, I've only been sculpting for about a year and a half or so and it's definitely a new passion in life and so I went on to talk about all the events that led up to me discovering this new passion of mine. So to thank Chloe for inviting me on, I'm going to make a little character that is in the theme of A Taste of Honey. For this one, I actually imagined sort of a bee fairy. I mean, the podcast is called The Taste of Honey, right? So I'm gonna make like a bee character sitting on like a pot of honey. I think that'd be kind of cute. Maybe over here is a cutesy little bee who's bringing her maybe like, I don't know, some honey, a flower, a something. So maybe she's turning this way and it's kind of a surprise. Oh, of course, this is getting complicated. Why is this already complicated? Come on, okay, ow, all right, all right, ow, okay. Ah, so many objects. Okay, okay, yeah, we got it. So we've got this like bee fairy person. She's sitting here listening to a podcast, probably may we, Taste of Honey. And like her friend, the little bee, has found a flower whose center is like the shape of a heart. And he thought that she would like it, so he brought it to her. And, it's, and she's like, oh wow, that's wonderful. I, I'm so glad you brought it to me. And that's our scene. I love it! Ah, it's so cute! I love it. Such a nice change of pace from tentacle monsters and gods of thunders whacking each other. Oh, this is great. And I'm not gonna attempt to hide this wire, by the way, because it's just gonna be, like, I don't know how I do it and it's too complicated. So I'm gonna use this to sort of trace the little bee's flight path to show that he's like, that, that this flower is heavy for him and it's like, he's like, he's flying up and it's, he's like wavering because he can't quite hold the weight, but he brought it anyway because he thought she would like it. So, I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep a pot, the pot of honey idea. I meant for this to be a pot of honey. What if I get a real pot of honey and just sit it right here? Wouldn't that be interesting? Wonder if I can order one in time. I'm gonna try to order one. Okay, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. Next step, I gotta clean up the bee fairy's anatomy and give her a costume. And I'm gonna keep it pretty simple, I think. Maybe just like a kind of a body hugging high neck dress with like some furry collars because, you know, bees have that kind of furry collar and maybe like a knee length skirt and some simple sandals for shoes. Even the monster lover among you have to admit, this is pretty cute. I'm pretty happy with this dress design, so I'm actually gonna take all this off now and work on our fairy's anatomy. So this is a pretty foundational step. You know, the better I do here, the easier time I'm gonna have throughout the rest of the sculpt. So I'm gonna spend quite a few hours doing this and making sure I get it just right. Anatomy looks good, so now I'm gonna move on to her face. I'm aiming for something on the cute side rather than say like the sexy side. Um, I hope that's okay to say. I mean, obviously there are more types of female faces than cute and sexy. Um, but anyway, uh, that's what I'm aiming for is a face that is more on the cute side of the spectrum. So I've been working on this face for like 
two hours now and it's kind of a disaster. I decided to go with clay eyes this time instead of little round plastic balls for eyes like I usually do because I wanted to put little irises in which you couldn't do with plastic eyes. Turns out I have no idea what I'm doing when it comes to clay eyes. I kind of want to give up and go to white eye forms because I know I can do facial expressions with that for sure but I really want to give her irises. Can I paint those little eyes? Yeah, but I don't like that look. I've seen them and I think it's kind of creepy to have like eye eyes in a clay figure. I don't know what to do. I, I kind of want to give up, but I also don't want to give up. I'm gonna try it. You go figure, right? You, you think? <laughs> I thought this project was gonna be pretty drama free other than trying to do it fast. But oh, of course there's drama. Jeez, like, just come on. <laughs> Why can't it be easy? <laughs> I don't know what happened. I just completely lost my mojo today. First, I couldn't even get the face looking like a human. Then it started looking like a man. And I think it's okay now, but to be frank, I've kind of lost a lot of confidence over this. And now I don't even know if this is a good neutral face or not. This is a little scary because I can't tell, I can't tell. It's been a long time since I've lost this much confidence. I don't really want to burn the clock anymore if, it, if I'm just going to flail at the problem. So I think I'm going to stop here for the night. Okay, I'm back. Let's get right to it. I'm going to just start over. I'm starting over and I'm going to use um, uh, plastic eyeballs instead. I can't spend another three hours today unsuccessfully making another face. So I'm just going to do what I know I can do. The main issue is actually that I don't have as much control with clay eyes as I do with plastic eye forms. I mean, it's it's obvious when I say that, right? Like, because with plastic eye forms, you can just stick the little ball in there and sculpt eyelids around it. It's just so much more forgiving. And with this sculpture, I just really, really, really need to get the facial expression right. Because, like, we're basically experiencing the scene and the sculpture through this character's eyes, right? Like, if she doesn't feel that sense of joy and wonderment that I'm aiming for, then we don't feel it. And that, as far as I'm concerned, would make this a failure as a sculpture. I am going to start work on her costume. But before that, I have maybe a thing that will make this even a little more special. This arrived in the mail. Amazon, you know? You gotta love them, you gotta hate them. You need something immediately. It's hard to beat. Ooh, a little smaller than I thought. It's a honey jar. Look at that. It even comes with like a little um a little uh, honey thingy. What I was thinking is we can do something like this. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, that's so good. That's so good. <laughs> not quite as tall as um, I thought it was going to be. Based on the description, it, it read like it was going to be six inches tall. I do like that it's just about the right width. We are definitely doing this. It's a little wasteful because it's like a $20 jar that, you know, could actually be used for honey or other things, but it looks great because now the character really stands out. Ah, oh, I love it! I love it! <laughs> Okay, so we just reached a halfway point. 12 and a half hours in, we have a mostly done anatomy, a mostly done face. We're starting on the costume proper. We have the base sort of figured out. We're gonna go get to the B at some point. I need probably need a few hours for that. Right now, I'm feeling like 
I have a pretty good shot at making it to the finish line with a, uh, a decent sculpture. Depends on how much work this dress is gonna be. If this dress takes any more than like three or four hours, I'm gonna be in trouble. If it takes less than three or four hours, I think we're gonna be in good shape. So nothing to do but to just give it a try and see. So that's the dress. Uh, it wasn't so bad, actually. It took about just as much time as I thought it was going to, and now we get to move on to her hair. I'm gonna do it a little bit differently than how I normally do hair. Usually I put down quite a lot of pieces, like lots of little strips of hair that I texturize to, you know, simulate hair. But this time I'm gonna go for like fewer but bigger pieces, so a slightly cartoonier look, but hopefully this will actually save me some time and actually be a bit more appropriate for the overall more lighthearted feel of the whole piece as well. Okay, we have eight hours, 30 minutes left on the clock. And actually, in terms of time, we are doing pretty good. Hair is done. We got some headphones, we got the collar, we got all kinds of stuff done. The face needs a little bit of work. I just did an alcohol wash on the face as well as the hair, and it revealed some issues that was hidden by the roughness of the finish before. So I'm gonna have to spend some time on that. Thank goodness we have time, because I definitely don't need eight hours to do the B, the wings, and the hands and feet. Because I think that's all that's left, so we're in pretty good shape. So, uh, we're back to it. Switching gears once again to B. Kinda can't decide. Do I want a more insectoid B? or a more cartoony bee. I think I like the cartoony bee better. I mean, they're both cartoony, but there's something extra charming about this fat little bee. Yeah, he looks way cuter. Okay, that's fine. We can set him aside for now. While this clay is warm, we can work on a flower. I realize I'm jumping around a little bit because this clay is easiest to work with while it's warm and squishy. So I'm just doing this now to save myself time later so I don't have to wait for it to come to temp when I do feel like making it at some point. So sometimes you just gotta do things a little bit out of order. Now it's time for hands and feet. I kind of like to save hands and feet for last because they're very delicate and they tend to get bumped around and squished around as you work on other areas. So, you know, I just tend to do them last just purely because it's less likely for me to mess them up if I do them later on in the whole process. Okay, feet are done-ish. Presentable at an arm's reach, um, but not presentable at all on close inspection. That's all I'm gonna have to be happy with because at this point we have five hours, 40 minutes left. So, ah, man, just, it's, so, it's so gross. It's so far from how I usually... Okay, I think it's wings time. What am I doing? Wings time. Where is my, oh, my desk, my desk, so messy, so messy. Getting delirious, I've been working really hard these past couple of days. You know, when you say you wanna record 24 hours, like the time you sit at the desk in order to get that 24 hours is absolutely intense. I just happened to have like a few days in a row free which lined up with this project perfectly. So that's cool, but basically it's been like get up, have some breakfast, sit down, work until midnight. It's about what it takes to get eight hours of recorded footage for whatever reason. I don't know why exactly, but that's just how it is. Okay, now it's time to do wings. Um, I'm not super sure what to say about these. They're not my favorite part of sculpting, but you know, if you want to do fairies, you got to do wings. Um, I guess I could say actually that I'm basing them loosely on real life honeybee wings, so somewhat factually accurate. How about that?
You guys, I'm really tired. I've been working basically non-stop for two days. This is day three. I have three hours and 40 minutes left on the clock. And I don't think I can do it today. I, I'm gonna have to go get some rest and come back tomorrow because I really don't feel like I have the power to take it to the finish line. It's be I think it's better to come back and be rested rather than trying to get it done in three days. Okay, it's the last day. We gotta finish our little bee and we have to fix our girl's face. What happened was I tried to narrow her face just a little too much and I lost the little lift that you get when you're smiling. Cause when you smile, right? It goes like, you know, it has this little, this, this is what lifts when you smile. So I need to bring that back and her jawline is not really quite there yet. We have to refine that quite a bit, but that's for later. Uh, for now, in order for the sculpture to even be even a little complete, we gotta do our little bee guy. This is hopefully gonna be pretty straightforward. And there's no fancy finishes, right? It's just like a smooth little lump of something. Just gonna refine the surfaces, make the collar fuzzy, make the legs not so bad looking. And I'm gonna add some sections on his butt so that it would look more like a bee. And maybe a little bit of texturing on the wing. So not so much there. We have three hours, 35 minutes left. Fingers crossed, it's gonna be tight. Uh, by the way, yes, I did a little bit of stuff on the base. Basically, I just had a couple of wooden rounds that I had laying around, screwed them together and glued the B flight path armature thingy into the side. I usually do this stuff off camera anyway in most other sculptures, so I don't think it's cheating. I brought you a flower. Yay, it's so pretty. I have to say, this has been a really fun challenge. I honestly could not have done this without every other sculpture that I've done for the channel so far. Like I, this was a real test of skill and a culmination of skill that I've acquired throughout even just the, the four videos that you've seen so far. As hard as this has been physically to do this much work in basically three and a half days, it's been really fun. I'll definitely do another one of these in the future because it's a really awesome way to see how far I've come in terms of skill. Anyway, that's it. From here on out, I'm just going to refine our girl, her her body finish and her face, to, you know, get it a little bit more feminine, a little bit more joyous, and that's the sculpture. So I'm gonna run the rest of the footage in time lapse and show you the not so epic but still nice final reveal, and I'll see you after it's done for the closeout. Well, here we are. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, I have to admit, I did cheat just a little bit after I ran out the clock on the, you know, on the two cameras. I, I did add it another about hour, hour and a half of refinements that I just, I mean, I couldn't help myself, sorry. <laughs> uh, if you wanna see pictures of the sculpture, you can check it out on my Instagram at archongart. And um, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching again, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.